Wednesday. Thank you so much for tuning in and for choosing to spend some of your time with me. I'm Maria Milagros, your friendly neighborhood life coach and public speaker, motivational speaker, author. You know the deal. If you don't, head over to www.mariamilagros.net and find out. Anywho, during the month of July, I've decided to take some questions. And so some new members who, as they sign up for my newsletter, or rather for my weekly email, sometimes they submit questions along with the sign up. And so I just took those questions and I said, that's what we're going to talk about for the month of July. I'm going to answer their questions. So the first question that I wanted to answer was a woman um, emailed me and she says, I want to learn how to be more confident. What is it that you do to build your confidence because you seem really good at it? Okay, so I want to talk about this because I think that it's really important, especially for us as women and especially for um, BIPOC people to understand who we are and to kind of own and take up space so that we can live a life that is confident. First and foremost, I just want to define confidence. And for me, it's really about knowing that what I have is enough, knowing that who I am is enough, knowing that my decisions and my choices are enough and never really feeling like I'm at a complete loss, right? And so I'm kind of like confident that I can figure it out, work it out, get it done, show up, be respected, you know, like that. So um, I decided to divide this particular topic into two weeks because I wrote out these like 10 tips that came to mind, tips, whatever. Um, and I want to share them five this week and five next week so that way it's not too much because in reality, every time you get a hold of some new techniques or tools, you really should just put one or two into practice at a time. And then once that practice becomes a habit and then that habit becomes like your regular way of being, then you can add on. Otherwise, trying to create a complete overhaul unless you have been traumatized, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because trauma in and of itself only really means that a major shift has occurred based on an event, right? So it's traumatic. But there is both good trauma and bad trauma based on how we register the information for ourselves. So unless a really significant traumatic event happens that creates this massive shift in our mindset and our perspective, it's really not sustainable to pick multiple things and try to overhaul your whole life at once. That might last for a short amount of time, but you're going to find yourself falling back into your old ways. So the recommendation is to usually do one or two changes, you know, at a time, see where you land and then pick up another one as you get better at a different one, right? That's how we really create lasting change is through consistency over time. Okay. So here's the five that I have for today. Um, the first one is, um, knowing who I am. And I say this all the time. I talk about this at all my motivational talks. I share this with students that I work with. I talk about it at nauseum, right? Because I want everyone to kind of be brainwashed into understanding the power of this data. There are about 8 billion people on the planet. And you are the only one of you that ever has been, ever will, and ever will be. You are the only one. And the chance of you being here is one in 400 quadrillion, four zero zero comma zero 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 zero zero. That's the chance of any one of us being here, which means not one of us, not one of us is a mistake. There is no way that that is the scientific number of the, of the, um, what's the word, the probability of us being here. And then you, somebody going to tell me I was a mistake? I don't think so. Somebody going to tell me you were a mistake? I don't think so. So knowing that, like really knowing who I am, I'm the only one of me that ever has been, ever is, and ever will be. And I, the chances of me being here are so ridiculous that it was not a mistake. I'm here on purpose. And like really allowing myself to live in that space, right? So that's the first one, like really knowing who I am on that kind of data perspective, right? The second part of that, the second one and part of that is knowing what I'm good at. There are 8 billion people on the planet. I don't have to be good at all the things. There are other people who are also good at other things. And when I give them room and I give myself permission to not need to be all the things, 
It's just like, I'm going to show up. I'm going to do the best I can. And when I don't know, I'm going to find someone who does and we going to hook it up, right? Collaborate. So it confidence also comes from knowing who I am, the fact that I belong here and what I'm good at. And so I know when I show up in those spaces, here's what my contribution is to those spaces. Here's what I know that I'm good at and here's where I shine. And if I don't shine, I'm going to step back because that's someone else's now place to shine, right? And that's how we build community and we collaborate. And it's also how we build our own confidence because I don't need to be all the things. I don't need to. So I'm going to give other people room because I know what I'm good at and I'm going to shine there and I'm going to give other people room to be what they're good at and to shine there. And imagine if all the the shining happened at once and we stopped like making ourselves less and really stepped into the things that we're good at and that's how we show up as that light. It would be so bright all the time, everywhere, right? So what are you good at? That's the second part. And then it ties into this third part, which is, Um, recognizing that I have nothing to prove, right? I have nothing to prove. When I was younger, I believed I had something to prove and I was taught by both family and societal pressures that as a woman of color, I had to check all these boxes in order to just line up and be enough, right? With people who were not. Um, And then as again, I got older and I started doing this work for myself, I realized I'm the only one of me and I'm not a mistake which means I have nothing to prove. I have birth rights that are, that I was like, I just deserve, period, because I was born. We are all deserving and worthy of, my next one, taking up space and actually being willing to take up space. So when I enter into a room, I'm not like, I'm the brightest light in this room, everybody watch out. I'm like, I'm gonna let my light shine. I get to take up space. I am not a mistake. I am here on purpose. I know who I am. I know what I'm good at. I'm going to do that, right? And what happens a lot of times is other people find that intimidating, but it's not that I'm intimidating. It's that they are intimidated by my brightness. And usually that comes from them not knowing or being disconnected from their own light and their own brightness, not being available for themselves to fully shine in what they're good at, not knowing that they are deserving and worthy of taking up space and that if we all just kind of took up our own space, we wouldn't ask other people to constantly be commenting on us and complimenting us and we wouldn't be hanging on their words and we would not be dependent on either their compliments or their criticism. We would see it all as feedback because we know who we are. We know what we're good at. We know that we are deserving. We know we have nothing to prove and we know we get to take up space, right? And then the last thing for today, um, which ties into all of that, is being okay with making mistakes. Um, As, again, a woman, as a mother... I had to learn real quick, especially when my daughter was little, like I don't have all the answers and that's okay. I don't have all the answers and I can find it somewhere else or I can find someone who can help me access that information or sometimes I don't need to know that. That's it, period. I don't ever need to know X, Y, and Z. That's not ever going to affect my life. It might be important for someone else's, but not for mine, right? So like knowing that I don't have to have all the answers, which also means I'm going to make mistakes, which also means I'm going to learn from them, which also means I'm not going to beat myself up for making mistakes. And I find that confident people acknowledge their mistakes. Like, oh yeah, oh my God, I totally messed that up. I'm so sorry that that caused you a blah, 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 whatever, right? And like, own it as quickly as possible. So those are some things um, for today that I'm going to share those five things. Know who you are. The only one of you that ever has been, ever is, and ever will be. And you are, the chance of you being here, the probability is so small that you are not a mistake. Recognizing what you're good at and really giving yourself room to shine in those spaces. Acknowledging that you have nothing to prove. Acknowledging that you get to take up space and recognizing that when you make mistakes, that's part of being human. That's part of like the growing learning process. It's not the end all be all of you as a person. So those are a couple of things that I have for you for today. I hope this was helpful. If you have something that either ties in or is even different that you know helps you build up your confidence, what is that? Share it down below in the comments so that we can all talk about it. Um, If you like this, you can give it a thumbs up. If you know someone who can benefit from it, please share it. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to post an old video from a couple of years ago about confidence building as well. So hopefully that'll help too. All right, that's all I have. I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And the reason I love you is because I love me. That's how it works. We can only give what we have. Mm -hmm. Just saying. 
super sparkly everything. Peace!